You're up early today. Are you excited? Yeah. <laughs> no. Today is Thursday, March 26th. About six in the morning. Up here with Everly. Yeah. Yeah. We're in Los Angeles in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. We've been quarantined for yeah. a little over a week now. Um, closer to two weeks, actually. The city put in a shelter in place order about a week ago, meaning all businesses are closed. Um, people are supposed to be staying in their houses um, to not spread the disease. And uh, I think today we might be having a baby. I am 38 weeks and about five days pregnant. Um, I have my checkup today and with everything as crazy and uncertain as it is, it's looking like we might induce early. Um, we might not, but I'm kind of hoping we do. So take you guys along with me as we figure it all out today. I'm nervous, I'm excited. I'm, feeling a lot of things. So is Everly. <laughs> okay. Obviously, this is not how I envisioned bringing this baby into the world, though. Um, as of today, partners are allowed to be in the room during delivery. You're only allowed to have one healthy adult with you the whole time, so that means um, my one and a half year old daughter and my mother won't be allowed to come visit us in the hospital, which has been more of a crushing blow than I anticipated. I'm really bummed that we won't be able to take newborn photos in the hospital, that my daughter won't be able to meet her brother in the hospital. Um, I just, I'd seen all these videos and pictures and I imagined her kind of pressing her nose up to that little clear bassinet and um, it's, it, it feels really sad to be robbed of those moments. Um, even though in the big picture, you know, we just want a healthy baby. We want um, what's best for everybody else. We want to keep everybody safe, but it's definitely not what I pictured and um, I'm a little sad about that. But I'm hoping that we get to go in and induce today that this baby comes quickly and is perfect and healthy. Okay, I just had my doctor's appointment and we are headed to the hospital now for induction. This is what I wanted. Um, I was definitely hoping for this outcome, but I'm still pretty nervous. Um, just, you know, everything's about to change. We're in the car. Um, we were told to go get some lunch. Obviously, we can't just go get lunch because everything shut down. So we just placed an order for some curbside pickup. Um, getting a little sandwich. I immediately regretted not eating more for breakfast this morning because I'm really hungry and I know that I'm going to be starved for most of this induction. So, how are you feeling? Good, I'm ready now, now that we know what's happening. I'm nervous, are you nervous? I'm nervous, but I'm also excited, so it's kind of just balancing out for me. Yeah, I'm excited too. So, um, yeah, to kind of break down what happened in there in the doctor's office, I went in and um, my blood pressure's been a little elevated, but it wasn't crazy. Um, and so she was planning to see me again next week, but then when she did her ultrasound to kind of check on my fluid levels, um, we found that I have something called poly, I don't even know, how do you say it? Polyhydramis? I could totally be saying that wrong. Poly something. Um, but it basically means that I have uh, a really high level of fluid in there, so. I am two days away from being 39 weeks. Um, I have already had one successful induction experience with my first, so I'm a good candidate for it. I'm already one centimeter dilated, um, so we kind of just figured now's the time to get going on it, so 
off to the hospital we go. Let's do it. <laughs> I mean, if this isn't a sign, I don't know what is. Oh my God. He literally has an alert on his car when walking in Memphis comes on the radio anywhere. Why? I don't know. This is why. <laughs> this is why. This is a sign? <laughs> It's already warm under there? Oh, I'm getting ready. It's officially begun. It is 2.15. We got the Pitocin going. We got a little baby hooked up to a remote monitor here. I brought my own robe, so I didn't have to wear the hospital gown. So this robe I got on Amazon, it has snaps here here so that they can have easy IV access and skin to skin after the baby gets here. It also snaps all the way up the back so my bare butt isn't hanging out when I have to get up. So that's kind of nice. So far it's not too crazy here in the hospital which is nice. Everybody's pretty calm and a good mood. Um, it's not too busy. One thing that is different on account of corona is that all of the nurses and doctors are wearing face masks. Um, so you can't really see their faces that well, but I mean, I totally get it. Um, so that's different from the last time I was here giving birth. Ooh, Pitocin's working. I can feel it. They tell me that since this is the second baby, it's going to go a lot faster, which I'm excited and nervous about. I'm curious what his birthday is going to be. If it's going to be today or if it's going to be early tomorrow. So I guess we'll see how quickly things progress here, but everything's going well so far. How much Pitocin you got going right now? You're at level 10. Level 10. The max is what, it's 24? 24. I'm bouncing on the ball. Trying to get little man to drop down. <laughs> freezing in this room. We've been at this now for seven hours. My contractions are two minutes apart. We've maxed out on Pitocin. We are at the top level, 24. Um, but I'm not really dilating, which is the same thing that happened with Everly. So here we are, riding out, watching some Harry Potter. So after about eight hours, maxed out on Pitocin, um, still not really dilating, which is unusual for a second baby. Um, so they did opt to give me the Foley balloon. We just got it out and only took an hour. So that was pretty quick. Um, so now I think we're probably gonna check the dilation again and see where to go from there. I'm told that once something kick starts when something connects in there that it's gonna go really really fast um, being that it's a second baby so we'll see we're not there yet but the contractions are definitely um, definitely getting a little more painful so I'm hopeful that we're making some progress <laughs>
14 and a half hours of labor. And he's doing really great. We're getting ready to be discharged today, one day later. Yeah. He passed all his tests. Feeling good. Both recovering, ready to go home. And uh, get into our little, our little self quarantine mode. Right, buddy? Hi, I missed you so much. Can I have a hug? Did your mama? Yeah. Do you see the baby? Do you know that this is your baby brother, sweet Sam? I know, those dogs are very distracting, aren't they? Do you see the baby? Do you see the baby? It's so cute. Today is little man's due date. He is one week and one day old. Aww. Despite the face he's making right now, he's a very, very happy baby. We're so grateful that he's here and that we're through at least the hospital worries about delivering. So leading up to the birth, there was obviously a lot of uncertainty about how we were gonna handle everything from having somebody available to watch our older daughter, Everly, um, to whether or not my husband was even gonna be able to be in the delivery room with us. Um, it was a really, really scary time. What ended up happening with us was that as soon as the shelter in place order was issued in California, my mother drove in from Palm Springs to LA and she sheltered in place with us um, until it was time for me to deliver so that we would have somebody that Everly was comfortable with um, here at home with her, um, already you know, quarantined with the family. So that was a huge, huge, huge help. Um, and Everly loves her grandma, so she, you know, didn't even care that we were gone or really notice. Um, so my mom stayed here with us for about a week before the baby was born, and then about a week after, she just left us a few days ago, and, um, it was really sad. We all cried because we know that she can't come back now until this is all over. We haven't had any visitors come see the baby, which is uh, kind of a bummer. Except for some people, some people love that excuse. They don't want any visitors and that's great. With our second baby, you know, we were looking forward to my in-laws coming out and visiting. Now that won't be happening. Other family members coming out and visiting, you know, our friends that are local coming by and seeing the baby and now nobody gets to see him until he's probably a few months old um, so it's it's a little disappointing for us I think that we won't be able to make any memories with our loved ones in his first days weeks months but we're grateful to have each other and our friends and family have been so supportive sending meals and gifts and all sorts of lovely things over to support us during this time. So that's been really, really nice. Um, and we've been FaceTiming with everyone and, and doing our best to keep in touch and let people see him over video and photos. In terms of the hospital, the day we got there, all of the hospital staff was starting to wear masks and gloves, which was great. Um, it was a little weird to not be able to see anyone's face. And I could tell the nurses didn't really enjoy wearing the masks either. And by the time we were leaving, they were having all patients wear masks. So anybody who came in after me to deliver a baby, I was told was going to have to wear a mask, which sounded terrible, but makes total sense. Um, in terms of our stay at the hospital, we were not allowed to leave our recovery room. We had to stay in there the whole time. Um, if we did leave uh, at all, we had to wear a mask outside in the hallway. And then when we got there, they did screen us for temperature. 
and asked us a few questions about whether we had traveled, um, whether we were showing any symptoms like a dry cough, um, if we had had a fever, if uh, we were feeling under the weather at all. And um, that's been kind of a theme with all of the doctor's offices that I've been to, the pediatrician, my OB, the hospital, every single place I've gone, uh, they've really intercepted you right away and checked for temperature to make sure or to try to do their best to screen out anyone who might not be feeling well. How are you feeling, little man? Oh. No. I'm still scared for him. You know, just getting him out didn't alleviate all of my fears about, you know, what could happen. Now that he's here, I feel better that I can physically hold him that I know he arrived safely, that we're out of the hospital, we're home. But I still get really paranoid and I'm still hyper vigilant about every little thing, every breath, every little grunt. I just wanna make sure he's okay. We're just doing our best, trying to be smart. Trying not to go overboard, but we're staying in place, we're being vigilant, we're washing our hands, we're cleaning off all the packages that come to our door. <laughs> and we're just being really grateful for what we have. Grateful that we're home together that this beautiful baby's here. That our older daughter's adjusting. We're doing really well. We're doing good, aren't we? We're gonna make it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you are an expectant mama getting ready to give birth, I am sending you so much love and strength. It's such a hard time. You're not alone. It's scary. If you have any questions, please hit the comments below. Find me on Instagram. I would love to help in any way that I can. If you're interested in hearing more about my journey before giving birth to Colton, I wrote about it in an essay for Motherly. The link for that is right down here in the information about this video. You can follow along on our journey on momneedsmerlot.com. You can also like and subscribe right here on YouTube for more of this sweet little face. Hope to see you guys again soon. Thank you for watching. <laughs>